Hello and welcome to today's video and this video is about this side entry Thorn B2255 watt sodium street light which was used in the UK from about 1970s, 80s, 90s uh, some were replaced with high pressure sodium lamps and the rest got replaced in the early 2000s with the new LED lights. There are also top entry versions of these as well and this and a Philips version was the most common used light on side streets in Leicestershire. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside this light before turning it on and show you some of the information, the wiring, then finally turning on the lamp. Now to get into these lights, it's quite easy. You have to undo this black clip on the end. The shade, the shade hangs down and then can be removed for cleaning or replacement just by removing this clip. The lamp inside is a Philips, see if we can get the etch, that's good. Uh, Philips made in the UK. 55 watts socks plus it also has a picture of a wheelie bin on it uh, with a cross through it because sodium street lights can cause fires if you deposit this in a dustbin and it gets broken if there's any moisture in the dustbin the sodium can catch fire so it is recommended that you dispose of these in a safe way. The best way of dis disposing of these is basically in a bucket of water by breaking the tube and the sodium burns off harmlessly. But you still have a load of broken glass. There's probably a correct way of disposing of these lights. But as they are now obsolete, that problem is now going away. There is also a hint of mercury and some other gases including neon in these lamps as well. Right and what I'm going to do now is turn this light on its side which they can do on street lights when fixing them and we'll just zoom in a little bit and you can see the sticker inside and it says Thorny MI B2. Uh, the lamps it requires 55 watt socks. Um, isolate supply before servicing. I already have done that. I've removed the 13 amp plug or 3 amp plug. And it's made in the Great Britain. I don't know what this AT10440 means, but IP54 means it's okay to be used outside. It's okay. We'll now go inside the light. So I'm just going to pause it for a second while I undo this screw. Okay, we're now inside the light. Uh, these are the mounting screws for the lamp. Allen keys and basically you can do them up and it adjusts the angle of what the actual light will sit on the standard pole. The wire comes in and goes to this connector block or chocolate block as it's also known in the UK. And these can either be push fit or terminal screw. And this is the terminal screw version. The live, the brown wire, goes to the photo cell and the live out goes to the ballast which we'll show in a minute the neutral wire one just loops round to work the photo cell and the other one goes 
to um, a capacitor, I believe. And there's also an earth wire, which basically goes to this earthen mount here and then continues on to the ballast. And this is the ballast and it's made by Thorn. I apologize it for being upside down, but if you want to take a picture of it, this is the information that's on it. I don't know if 407 means anything. And basically we have two wires coming out of it. And the brown wire is from the capacitor. And then go, it has the live going live out from the photocell to the capacitor and then from the capacitor goes to this ballast and the pink wire is on its way to the sodium lamp and if we move it a little bit further right here we are a little bit further along the silver one is the igniter and that has a black wire and a pink wire and they both go to the sodium lamp one either side the black wire joins with the brown live and then the the a neutral wire from the igniter also goes to the tube as well and then obviously back to neutral and that is basically how they are wired and the capacitor basically, I think it's designed to stop interference. And that is it. And any power spike that may be caused when these lights fire up. Anyway, this is the wiring inside the light. And if any of these components go wrong, they can be easily changed for newer ones. Okay, I have now reassembled the light and now what I'm going to do is let it switch on and it's going to take about three to four minutes to turn on. So if you want to fast forward through this part of the video, you're more than welcome and I'll see you on the other side. cover on the sensor is just so that the light doesn't turn off but now we'll watch this red sodium lamp slowly turn yellow enjoy <laughs>
Okay then, this um, light is now approaching full brightness and what I'm going to do is fit the shade. And what the shade does with the diffusers, it um, angles the light down at varying degrees to light up the street to try and avoid light pollution. With so the light is downwards. However, as you can see with the design of this light, still a lot of light is shining in an upwards direction. And these street lights we would have been used um, on side streets and in Leicestershire, England. They were used on minor roads with either the 35 watt version um, or this 55 watt version on the more major roads and then the, the, the busier the roads got the um, larger the lights got but this is as literally as large as the um, thorn lamps went in this design the bigger thorn lights uh, the ballast was remote and in the bottom of the post with just the lamp at the top anyway I hope you enjoyed this video of this Sox Plus 55 watt sodium lamp in a Thorn Beta 2 light fitting and I'm going to end this video by removing the cover on the photo cell the standard photo cell and we'll let the light turn off and that's where we'll end this video and I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this retro sodium street light from around the late 1970s 80s 90s and today in 2020 you can still see some of these around but they're normally on in outer villages and they haven't quite got around to replace them with the new led ones yet Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like or subscribe. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.